In this video, we're going to practice identifying some of the peaks in IR spectra. In general, when we're looking at IR spectra, we don't want to spend too much time trying to identify all of the peaks, and that's usually frustrating for students when they first start with IR analysis. So just kind of keep that in the back of your head as you're wondering like, hey, what's that peak represent? We probably just don't care. In this problem, we're being asked to just look for carbon hydrogen peaks and carbon chlorine peaks. Remember that the carbon hydrogen peaks that we pay attention to are the ones that are on the left hand side of the spectrum. So this peak right here is the carbon hydrogen peak that we want to pay attention to. Carbon chlorine, um, which is typically not a peak that we would be looking for in an IR, it's um, in this spectrum, it's going to be this big prominent guy right here. This is our CCL peak. And this is a perfect example, like right off the bat, of students who are like uh, wondering, you know, here's this really important looking peak. Why are we not trying to figure out what this peak actually represents? This peak right here is probably due to either carbon-carbon single bond or another type of carbon-hydrogen interaction, like maybe a bend or something like that. There are, in general, usually we don't pay any attention to anything that's on this side of the of the spectrum at all because there's a lot of different peaks over on this part of the spectrum that are present in every single molecule, so they don't really serve um, any valuable purpose in terms of identification. So let's keep practicing. Um, we're looking for carbon-hydrogen peak, carbon-nitrogen peaks in this particular spectrum. Carbon-hydrogen peaks, we're always going to be finding them in this area of the spectrum. Um, carbon-nitrogen peak is going to be right around here, most likely is this guy right there. And um, now we're being asked to compare the general location of the carbon hydrogen, carbon nitrogen, and carbon chlorine peaks. So our carbon hydrogen peak is on the very left hand side, our carbon chlorine peak is far on the right, and carbon nitrogen is somewhere in the middle. And we're being asked to draw a relationship between the position of these, rel these relative position of these peaks and the mass of the different atoms. As masses get heavier, as the atoms get heavier, the peaks that um, they generate in the IR show up further to the right. Um, and that's, that's one of the variables, one of the two variables that dictates the location of a peak. The mass of the atom, as the atom gets heavier, the peak goes further to the right. Uh, as atoms in a bond get heavier, how does this affect the strength of the bond? Heavy atoms cause the bond to weaken. That bond trying to hold on to that big old heavy atom, it weakens, weakens the bond. Let's take a look at the other variable that dictates the location of the peak, which is the bond um, single versus double versus triple, the bond order. So in this page, we're looking at pentane, pentene, and pentine from top to bottom. So this first spectrum here is for pentane. And we want to look for um, the, it says the three major peaks in pentane. I don't really know why I'm asking for three. Here's the carbon carbon, or excuse me, carbon hydrogen. Carbon carbon peak is going to be one of these two. Like it's really hard to tell, you know, which is which. So these two peaks here, one of them is going to be carbon carbon and one of them is going to be carbon hydrogen. And it's not going to be important for us to know which is which because again, like I said, we generally don't pay that much attention to what's going on over on this side of the spectrum because all molecules have carbon carbon bonds and carbon hydrogen bonds. So it's not very useful to distinguish them. Um, now, the next molecule here, we have pentene. So let me draw um, one pentene specifically. And on this one, all that we're doing is looking for the double bond peak. So we know that this molecule has carbon hydrogen bonds and we know that they're located right there. And we know that it's got some carbon carbon and carbon hydrogen single bonds and they're located, you know, if we match it up perfectly, they're probably right here. So we're looking for, you know, a peak that isn't present in pentane. These peaks, um, so these peaks are there. These peaks are kind of there. They're just not as strong. This right here is the peak that is different 
between these two spectra, this is the peak that is associated with the carbon-carbon double bonds. And in general, double bonds are located in this particular region of the spectrum in this area. Carbon-carbon and carbon-oxygen and carbon-nitrogen double bonds all show up in this spot. And now we are looking at one pentine. So we're looking at a triple bond, one, two, three, four, five, this guy right here. And again, same thing. We're looking specifically for the triple bond peak. So we know that these are, are the carbon hydrogen bonds. And we know, uh, well, like all of these right here correspond to the same type of boring carbon carbon single bonds carbon hydrogen bonds so the unique peak that we can see in this spectrum is this guy right here this is the carbon carbon triple bond and in general that's where we're going to find our triple bonds so if we kind of divide the spectrum we're going to have bonds to hydrogen right here and then we're going to have our triple bonds and our double bonds and then we're going to have a bunch of crap that we ignore because it's just a bunch of carbon hydrogen single bonding and carbon-carbon um, single bonding. Generalize the trend that we've observed right here. I guess I just kind of did this. Um, we go carbon-hydrogen single bonds in the first leftmost portion of the spectrum, and then we go triple bonds in general. I'm just going to make a triple bond symbol because it doesn't have to be a carbon-carbon triple bond. And then we go double bonds, and then we go a bunch of garbage that we're just always going to ignore. <laughs>